almost finally back into a car just waiting on this tax return then we're gonna fix our other car if you guys remember I totaled my car back in September so I've been on foot patrol for about five months now probably be about six after all is said and done my original goal was to be carless for a year just to really teach myself a lesson and to not drive also just not to run the risk of possibly getting into that situation again so here I am five months down the road I've gotten my bike jacked and we've left our apartment now I'm about to get my car back or a car back and I've experienced getting your car totaled is like the worst experience to ever go through if you're still financing a car for sure like outside of me just not having my car this financial company freaking sucks it's just paying it off but I've gotta send in all these documents car still hasn't gotten paid off so I'm making monthly payments on the car I'm not driving which is my fault completely but still I thought this process would have been a little bit simpler considering I got it financed at a company that's actually like out here and it's not like some other state or anything but yeah it freaking sucks not having a car value what you got always remember too as fast as the situation can go from you loving your life to you hating your life it can go right back to you loving it it only takes one event one turn one change of events to really get your life back on the track that you want it. I'm about to get hit by a car out here but they'll slow down for me whatever just recently my wife and I had to emergency evacuate our place of living so right now we're living with a friend of mine very graciously allowed us to come and stay some time at his house uh, so we're just looking for a place in the meantime that's going to be affordable the only thing that sucks is we had a killer still of a deal at the place that we were at great quiet nice little neighborhood now we're trying to find something that's remotely close to that same thing so i'll keep you guys updated on that so i decided i'm gonna start up a segment about my morning walks because i feel like i get a lot of genius sayings or things in the morning when i'm walking to work so if you guys stay tuned that's what i'm gonna be doing a lot today I was just walking and thinking, somebody the other day had told me, you can only control so many things and then other things you can't control. The more time you focus on what you can't control, the further you get away from where you want to be. But if you focus on the things you can control, you'll get there eventually. I think that's just super intelligent and smart. And I heard it from one of like the smartest dudes I know, but I'm gonna keep his name out of this and I'm gonna just claim it. But, uh, there's things in life that we can't focus on because we can't control them. Like we can't think about every day if somebody tried to break into our house. But we can think about what we can do to get away from that situation and how we can make our lives better in the process of that. I can't really control that I don't have my car right now, but I can make the best of every single day without my car. So that's what I gotta do as I walk past all these cars that are driving. I'm a little bit sad because I don't have mine. So I'm out here walking. Oh man, almost back to the house that I'm staying at. Two mile walk there, two mile walk back. Kind of a little bit tired today. You know what I'm saying? But excited though, got youth group coming up tonight. That's gonna be a blast as usual. My Wednesdays are always pretty fun play football, play soccer, whatever the day of the week is, or the game of the week is. Usually pretty fun. We got Chris Swales coming out to speak, bringing God's word, so that's going to be a good time. I always love hearing ex-military guys speak, especially when they got a story like this dude. Crazy. Was not never supposed to walk, and then miraculously God healed him one day, and boom, he was able to walk just like that. I'm trying to think of some more stuff to tell y'all, but I'm really just trying to get home alive. Walking in these dangerous streets of Moreno Valley. You know what I'm saying? And I'm listening to this fire music right here. Listening to Dream Junkies. Had a good conversation with a dude today. He's asking me, since I'm a Christian, do I gotta listen to less secular rap or secular music? I said yes. Well, no, yes and no. It depends. 
Because I started listening to less secular music more recently than ever. Like, I just really don't even listen to any secular music at all. But I guess it's different for each person. I got my own reasons why I don't really like to listen to secular music, mainly because I don't like what they talk about. But also because, like, nowadays, it's really bangers or bars. You don't have too many rappers or artists with both. And that's what kind of what we started talking about. And I feel like a lot of Christian rappers, whatever you want to label them as, have bars and bangers. They have deeper meaning, but they have good beats. They don't have the beats that are going to make you jump up out your seat and dance. But they got some beats that's going to make you knock your head. And that's what really matters. Too many times nowadays in music, we got to choose either beats or rhymes and then content. But I'm trying to have both, like it used to be. Back in the day, you used to get both. You used to get bars and you had bangers in one. So I feel like nowadays, a lot of these really good up and coming Christian artists or already made it Christian artists are doing that. They're making those raps, those songs, those joints that are fire all the way around. So it's not like, hey, you gotta choose. Do you want beats or you want bangers? Do you want bangers, you want bars? Do you want dope words or you want dope beats like me as a consumer i don't feel like i should have to choose i feel like y'all should give me what i want and right now i want both of them i want everything i want to be able to get like you talking about something meaningful being god first and foremost not only but that's dope and then i also want to be able to have some type of beat that i can nod my head to and not sit there like a reject with my hands folded in my lap like i want to be able to get live to it and a lot of people in the Christian hip hop are really starting to do that and that's what's dope. We're starting to shake that stigmatism of Christian rappers are whack. I feel like a lot of the Christian rappers that are whack are getting exposed. Just like a lot of the regular rappers that are whack get exposed on the daily. We're stopping the, we're not listening to as many Christian rappers just because they're Christian rappers. But now we're starting to listen to them because they're actually good music. And that's what matters at the end of the day. I wanna to listen to good music that glorifies God and also has a deeper meaning to it. So I don't pick bars over bangers, even though I do, but I really want to pick both. So if you got both, you got me and I'm dope. All right, so I'm almost to the house where I'm staying at, at my boy's house. And uh, every day I walk in, I've known this dog for like five years or like maybe even more, but every time this dog sees me, it wants to bark his head off. So I'm just gonna prove a point real quick and show you guys, watch this. I'm walking in the door in like 15 seconds, so bear with me. As soon as I walk in, the dog gonna bark and start growling at me. Hold up. I got it back. I think the dog was outside. That's why the dog didn't bark. But the electricity's still out. Yep. Oh well. Out. So, me and wifey just got out of charter. We're turning our stuff. Bittersweet, not really. All bitter. No sweetness. All bitter. But check this out. God bless us with 10 bucks. We were supposed to pay them $10, but she said we'll get 10 bucks back on our card. So we're 10 bucks richer. Thanks, God. Bye.